Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, I really want to work on stations, even though we don't really have a contract to do so. We do have a contract that wants three crew in orbit, and a crew duration record of seven days, though that could be just with one. So that's a possibility. Another interesting thing is that, well, we've got this human orbital contract, two Kerbals, and... Um, well, there's a variety of locations indicated there. That's interesting. It looks like uh, we have one orbit specified there and then another orbit for five days. So it's a bit complicated, this particular mission. I, I like that, though. That's uh, worthwhile. Uh, but we only have 180 days, so maybe I shouldn't pick it up just yet until I figure out what craft I'm going to use. I guess we could just use the Kelly spacecraft. We also finally have a human moon landing mission. Uh, that gives us only a year. Man, uh, Kennedy gave 10 years. Uh, this is one year, but I guess it knows that we've already basically achieved that. And this is a single person lunar orbit mission. Well, if we do the lunar landing, we should probably pick this one up as well. And that's also a year. So, on the bright side, our build times are pretty quick. On the downside, uh, I'm really waiting for some technology here, in particular better docking ports and short-term habitation. So short-term habitation gives us the larger crew modules so that we can have a station and then advanced flight control gives us proper docking ports that Kerbals can actually move through. Remember our docking ports right now are propellant only. So that's what we're waiting for. But I suppose we could try that uh, Kelly 3 that I had built before that I tried to launch uncrewed but it didn't have enough electric charge on it. So yeah, alright, well I guess we'll pick this one up. Um, though these, this contract is not going to work with these two. This is more of a Gemini contract and this is a straight up moon landing. But I think we can do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me present our first specialized low Earth orbit launcher for Kerbals. And this is the Kelly 3 EO for Earth orbit on the Nico 606, a new rocket. And what we see here is basically the Kelly 3 without the lander portions, but with this particular service module, which is also part of the ascent module system on the Kelly 3, but uh, we're just keeping it as is. And then we've got this Mark 1 lander can advance which is sort of a question mark in my mind because um, unlike this Mark 1 lander can, hold on, let me get these the Delta V stats out of the way, uh, this Mark 1 lander can says avionics 20 tons. This one doesn't say anything about avionics. Um, nothing at all. So that's a puzzlement and maybe that's because it's advanced, I don't know. But it carries two is the important thing and we wanted uh, I just wanted to have it available as extra crew room for long duration missions, though currently our docking port is not correct, this is the propellant only docking port, but I just wanted to see how it would work out. And it's got its own little uh, service module sort of thing, and that will help us fulfill this contract which requires us to go into various orbits and uh, have the crews stay stick around there. Uh, there is an additional food, water, and oxygen pallet here, and that is connected to the docking port, and also more food, water, and oxygen in the lander can. In total, for the two crew that we plan to send up, we have 60-odd days, so uh, yeah, that should be fine. And then there's the launcher. Well, here we have six NK-19 engines, and at the bottom we have the six NK-15s. The reason for this setup is because if there's anything we've learned in previous episodes, it's that having more engines is safer. So instead of, I initially wanted this to be on the Nico 621, but the thought of having one engine go out on the two engine stage, or of course the third stage with just one engine, uh, was not very appealing. So thinking about what would happen if we lost an engine, I figured that a six engine setup would be best. So we just knocked out the second stage, and we have this six engine set up uh, instead. Uh, well, I mean, it is the second stage, but it's shifted down. The burn time is only 4 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, so it has a high thrust-to-weight ratio at the end, 
and therefore I've put them on in sets of three as you can see so that we can shut down three when the time comes to limit g-forces because unfortunately the NK19s don't have throttling I believe yeah they don't have throttling so that's the downside well that's a downside anyway um, actually uh, NK19 might have throttling it's I think it's the NK9 V that doesn't have throttling so we might be alright we might be able to throttle down to limit g-forces and I'll be good but as you can see, just on the two stages, we definitely have enough delta V for orbit. But just in case uh, something happens early on, we still have uh, the stage here to boost us into orbit. It's only got 0.6 thrust weight ratio, so it'll be a tough, tough push. But it's got 2,177, and then we still have the fuel up here to do the rest of the business. So it's a fairly resilient sort of thing. Lots of uh, backup just in case something fails. And you can see that the thrust weight ratio on the second stage at the start is above one, and that's just in case something fails on the first stage. And if you'll note, uh, if something fails on the first stage uh, very early on, of course we would want to launch escape, but there is an opportunity to go to orbit. Uh, we can uh, use 6,700 from here, 8,100 from here, and then 1,000, and you add that all up, and it still leaves us enough fuel to uh, deorbit. So that is one of many abort modes that can work on this thing. There, there's all sorts of opportunity to save the Kerbals on this. It's only supposed to launch two, even though we have room for four. And actually the total delta V you can see is enough to go on a lunar mission, but we're not going to do that. Uh, let's see, it looks like Bill needs some more experience. So uh, Valentina and Bill will go and we'll try and fulfill this particular human orbital mission and then while that's going on we can uh, kill the time to do the uh, build the lunar rocket and of course get the technologies for our space station so basically it's all a matter of time here uh, we're not doing any Mars missions yet because we're not at that window yet we we can wait a year and all of these contracts I picked up this time need to be done within a year so we can get done with all of them and still have plenty of time to build our Mars mission uh, of course the Jupiter mission is going to encounter Jupiter in more than two years so plenty of time for that to deal with that as well we could send a backup Jupiter mission but I think I've decided to just go with one for now alright so that is the basic landscape let's build this oh well <laughs> Well, we definitely don't want that staging error. Now, let's save and build. So I've uh, completed short-term habitation research, but I don't want to build my station until we get advanced flight control, which has the docking port. So that's another 74 days. We're still waiting 26 days for the Kelly 3 EO to build. And we did build an extra Jovian 1 but I'm not going to launch that just yet. We'll hold it in reserve. Um, we might be able to do something with Saturn. I don't know. But uh, people have mentioned that a second build slot appears if I upgrade the VAB, I think. Well, we have the funds to do so, so I'm going to queue that up. But it's going to take time, obviously. So um, vehicle assembly building, it'll take 72 days to get that upgrade done. So just about the same time as we get advanced flight control. Okay, let's warp to complete. Alright, well, what can I say? That is an interesting looking stubby rocket. I guess we're, we're sort of going for a Saturn 1-ish thing, though we're a little bit late on that, aren't we? Uh, but just the sheer size of the engines in fitting six on a stage, you know, first stage and the second stage, uh, leads to a sort of bulk to it. Uh, I guess that's unavoidable. But, yep. SAS on throttle is up. Of course, this is much more expensive than do using the Nico 621 because 621 only has three engines on the second and third stage, whereas this has six on the second stage. And the cost of the NK 15s is not that much more than the NK 19s, so ultimately, it's uh, this costs more. Okay, and so yeah, Valentina and Bill hopefully will appreciate all of the redundancy in this. This is over-engineered by a lot considering we're going to low earth orbit and we have like 4,000 meters per second extra. So here we go. Ignition. And launch. 
use of boosters will happen. I mean, of course, this could benefit from boosters. But we'll ponder that later on. Maybe a Soyuz-style system. But then that limits the kind of space we have on the second stage to fit six engines, so... Soyuz, of course, only has one on the second stage. One that has four nozzles, but if it fails, it fails. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Given the high cross-section of the vehicle, this probably does have quite a bit of dynamic pressure. Everything looking nominal so far. We are past Mach 2. We're not looking to go into any particular orbit, I think, I hope. I mean, uh, in terms of inclination, it didn't say anything about inclination. Yep, just altitude. We have lunar amounts of ablator and heat shielding, so that should be alright. Okay, first stage shut shutdown and set and ignition. Second stage has ignited. All right. Launch escape system separation. And it is off. Oh, throttle up. Haha. <laughs> forget to throttle up. Now the max burn time on these engines is seven minutes and seven and a half minutes and we're only using them for four and a half so that's an additional plus. I could have just put four engines on here but then the thrust weight ratio would have been very low. And it looks like uh, with the second stage we have about a thousand meters per second extra. That's the kind of redundancy that we have here. That's not including all of the other service module stuff. We could build a lighter rocket to do this. Maybe a 404 if we don't have the little lander and its service module thing. The 404 could do it. But this is for a long duration mission. And in the future we'll have proper docking ports between the front end and the lander can so that they can actually go through. Yeah, somehow in real life missions they often rely on a single engine on the second stage, but with test flight involved, boy, does that not seem appealing. I mean, or, you know, a final upper stage. One engine. Seems rather dangerous with test flight around. What's the mean time before failure right now? I mean, 300 minutes. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for a failure rate less than... less than 1 out of 100 for crewed missions, then that means that you're going to... that's not going to be good enough because our burn time is 4.5 minutes here and up to 7.5 minutes with these engines. 300 minutes mean time before failure means you'll get a failure every... Well, with the burn time like we have on here, every once in every 75 flights or something like that, or 66, something like that. So, not quite up to snuff. Well, I'm gonna turn off three of the engines right here. So we're only running on three now. If there were to be a failure right now, we just shut them all off and then go with the Astros engines on the service module. And we will have this stage deorbit, so that will have it deorbit. And we want the fairings at the same time there. Alright, separation. Okay. All right, and ignition. 
Okay, let's try that again. Ignition. There we go. Let's wait till apoapsis. Okay, well, what, what orbit do we have to go to? Uh, it wants apoapsis between 420, uh, 425 kilometers and 625 kilometers. And then we have four days there, I guess. Yeah. Obviously, periapsis will be what our apoapsis is right now. Okay. Now, here's a question. Do we need the fuel cells or... Or do we just need extra solar panels? Let's get the other solar panels out and then see if we also need fuel cells. We should put fuel cells on the lower module as well. Well, it uh, looks like we do need fuel cells, so not as much solar panel re as I would have hoped. Let's activate a fuel cell. Alright. Let's make orbit. And go to 425 kilometers minimum. That'll do for now, I think. Let's check. Okay, so orbiting, it's gonna take, uh, yep, take four days. All right, so they're here. Life support is good. The question is really whether power is good or whether we're gonna have to bring them back. And I'm gonna try and do this legitimately, which means I'm going to time warp with them because let me do it in map view uh, okay electric charge well no it, it'll recover but I'm worried about the fuel cell fuel the hydrogen and oxygen so we'll see what that what happens with that uh, okay we're running out of electric charge here okay um, let's stop using RCS for everything activate the other fuel cell we might have to bring them back early we'll just have them go in this orbit we might not challenge the higher orbit which is another five days I don't know because it the fuel cells and solar panels are good on a trip to the moon but when we're in a low orbit like this we're in the shadow of the earth and that's not so good then it causes problems Let's see if we can allow it to reorient properly once it is in sunlight. Will it recover some electric charge? Because we're really low on electric charge right now. Okay, let's see if that orientation helps after we stabilize. Maybe our tail will follow the sun while we time warp, hopefully. Yeah, given our hydrogen and oxygen depletion, we're, we're gaining electric charge now. Though it'll keep stopping me. Um, I feel like our hydrogen and oxygen isn't good enough to boost to the higher orbit and wait five more days. We're through two days, but a third of our fuel cell fuel is done. It's funny, the hydrogen has stopped depleting. Even though I, it's pretty clear the fuel cells are still running. Here, both the hydrogen and oxygen have stopped depleting. But our electric charge situation indicates that the fuel cells are still working. Otherwise, we would run out of electric charge much faster. Instead, we were actually replenishing overall. So, it's, it's that thing I noticed on, on the trip to the moon as well. Let's see which tank still has hydrogen and oxygen seems like a little trick we're playing um, okay so we fulfilled the lower orbit we'll have to boost up to a higher orbit now uh, where is this hydrogen and oxygen okay it's here it's actually used some of it or maybe that's boil off so if I want to make things hard on myself I'd shift that up because for some uncertain reason it can't access this hydrogen and oxygen but first we'll do the maneuver to boost our orbit and then I'll do that so we're pretty close to apoapsis 
Let's go prograde. I mean, if we turn off the fuel cell, you can see the electric charge consumption goes up. But by some bug, it's not taking the fuel from here. This has to be a service module tank, otherwise we wouldn't be able to put water and oxygen, I don't think. And not to mention, these engines wouldn't work. And they say propellant very stable, not feed pressure too low or anything. Okay, shut down. It's still not very high. I mean, it'll give us a marginally better situation. I wonder if we could power down the lander can or something. Toggle power. No, it doesn't seem to do anything. Yeah, our electric charge situation doesn't change much. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. It's satisfied. Now we have to stick around here for another four days and 23 hours. Let's go tail to the sun. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try and do it legitimately. So I'll pump the fuel cell fuel up, even though it's really tempting to take advantage of this bug. If the fuel cell fuel runs out, we should be pretty well off on stored electric charge, but we'll, we'll call an abort then and bring them back down. I wonder how well it's oriented towards the sun or not at all. Not at all. Um, would be helpful if it was more like sun tracking, but this won't work while we're on time warp. On the other hand, uh, if I like turned off, hmm, this is rotation momentum, relative rotation. Oh, targeting the map to set as reference, sun. Hmm. Wait, will that work? Um, we want to go retrograde. So will it will it automatically follow the sun then? I didn't notice that feature in persistent rotation before. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, tracking the sun. Ooh, I have learned something. I'm sure somebody's told me about this before, and I just totally forgot that happens okay um, whoa slow down um, that's good that's good let's shut off the fuel cells now that we can make sure that the solar panels are getting full sunlight we actually don't I mean you can see we've totally powered up already oh um, shoot we have to pump the rest of fuel cell fuel up again we've reached that limit well, we've completed crude duration of seven days, so that's another contract fulfilled. And it looks like you might be able to get through this just barely. Not entirely sure how, well, I mean, I guess it's crude duration in low Earth orbit, because I'm pretty sure I've sent crew out for more than seven days before. But then they landed on the moon. That's the trick, isn't it? They had to land and then, uh, and then reset the counter. Hmm. If only I'd uh, noticed that thing about persistent rotation earlier, I think we'd have been all right. Barely, though. We wouldn't have had to run both fuel cells at any time. 22 hours left. Okay, 12 hours left, but we now have no more fuel cell fuel, and we are on the batteries. Two more hours. We're at about half power now. And... That's it. Over it's completed. We just have to bring them back. Alright, about half power. Let's make sure um, we move all the power that we can up to the pod. It's just the lander can that's mostly empty, so we're, we're all right. Okay. Yep, uh, decouple. 
I think if we start deorbiting now, we'll end up in the South Atlantic. So that doesn't sound too bad. It's not the Pacific, but still. On this particular orbit, we've got a long stretch of Atlantic, so it's not like the narrowest bit. Okay, well, let's test out the Lunar Gemini engines. Ignition. We'll aim for 60 kilometers. I think that should bring us down directly. So we should add some fuel cell fuel to the to the other module, though that's bound to change in future iterations. This part is pretty pretty definite, but the the lower module will probably change drastically. We don't need the lander can. We could use some the station parts once we get them. Okay, well let's get to atmospheric interface. Looks like our periapsis is further along than I thought it would be. But that will be bound to be pulled in, hopefully. Okay, but before we get to actual atmospheric interface, I should dump the service module at about... Oh, well, we're passing by Florida right there. Um, about 300 kilometers will do for that. Okay, separating the service module. Right, unlocking fuel. Ooh, vigorous. And we'll have descent mode on. <laughs> We've got residual roll anyway. Oh, I should probably turn off that... Uh, Oh, uh, we, we have to use SAS to enable that particular mode anyway, so it should be all right. Maybe. Okay, we've got a bit of rocking back and forth. Let me try and stop that temporarily. Service module is exploding. We have an angle indicative of descent mode, so that seems to be working. But we're still rocking back and forth a bit. Come to think of it, so using a four engine NK19 stage makes a lot of sense since we already have one, right? For the Nico 944. We can just use that stage as the upper stage instead of the six engine one. It might be a little bit overkill to use six engines, but then, then there's the issue. Well, if we. Uh, leave off the Mark II lander situation. Uh, maybe that'll lighten the load so that our thrust to weight ratio isn't so low. And that would help. Okay, here we go. Flame effects. I think after this, I'll uh, complete the technology we need for the docking ports, and the next thing we'll do is launch some sort of station. Well, there's a 14-day crew duration mission now. But yeah, for some reason, Kerbal Alarm Clock sees a first space station contract that's eight days old. And I don't remember seeing that ever. I think I would have noticed, because I wanted that one. Okay, here we go. High G-forces, 3.4. I mean, with the scent mode on, it shouldn't go too high. Plenty of spare blader. I guess we could lighten that up. Since we're only going to be doing low Earth orbit missions with this. I still feel better having the Soyuz heat shield on. But maybe we can dump the ablator that's actually on the Gemini cabin. So about 4.1 G's max. Okay, we are below the speed of sound, so let's turn descent mode off. And Smart ASS might as well be off as well. The atmosphere is enough to orient us properly. We are currently here, over the South Atlantic. Off the west coast of Africa. Okay, drogue shoots out. 
preliminary deployment of main chutes. And we have full parachute deployment, bringing us to 5 meters per second. Okay, the waves are inviting as the Kerbals bask in the glory of their difficult yet successful mission. Very challenging, very tight on the electric charge, but they made it. And before the textures get us, let's recover. Um, uh oh, yeah, recover. Jeez. Worried me there. Okay, everything's good. Bill got to level one. And. Well, we don't have any vessels in construction. I should see whether we have two build slots, actually. Uh, let me, uh, while we're waiting for the other technology to finish, let me at least build uh, Kelly 3 to do the moon mission. And then once we get the technology unlocked, I can build a space station. I'll be with you with that. Okay, everyone, so here we have our new station, our first station. I've called it Spaceport 1, and we're going to launch it on Nico 621. So it's not that big, it's only 25 tons. And we've got the food, water, and oxygen up here. That's a huge food, water, and oxygen tank. Let's, uh, whoops, go outside so I can scroll up. And so we've got a docking port. It's controlled by a Thor avionics unit because we're not going to be sending Kerbals up initially. We've got solar panels here, communications, because, again, remote controlled for now. And then we've got these PPD-6 crew cabins. And if we take a look at the crew cabins that we've gotten for station building, we've got this one and then this uh, PPD-4. But this has a crew capacity of 2, and it's 3.8 tons. This is basically double the size. Um, it seems to have electric generator, but I don't trust that just yet. So. And once we uh, see that actually working, that would be great, but I don't know what it uses to generate... Well, it might be... no? Nope, I don't know what it actually uses to generate electricity. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what this generator is. Uh, maybe it actually takes 800 watts. Maybe that's what that means. That makes more sense. I, I trust that it will be draining power, not producing it. And so, we have a lot of ways of generating power. Uh, for instance, the solar panels, but also the Gemini adapter equipment section. And so this is the section on the bottom of the Gemini that we have never used, even though we've launched many Gemini capsules so far. And this has a fuel cell built in and has built in hydrogen and oxygen. So that's nice, but I've strapped on a bunch of extra fuel cells and we have, oh, these tanks down here our hydrogen and oxygen tanks for those fuel cells uh, just in case we need extra. So we've got plenty of that. We've got MMH and N204 for maneuvering. We've got one kilonewton thrusters for maneuvering. And that's just uh, when we try to dock other modules to this because we've got a docking port down there and one up there. We might want to use it to maneuver rather than the new module because this is 25 tons whereas new module might be launched on Eco 944 in which case it'll be about 40 tons, 50 tons, or it could be launched on Nico 2544, in which case it could be like Skylab or something that big. So yeah, probably this is the portion we want to have maneuver. And in that case, uh, it doesn't show right now, but it actually has about 600 meters per second. So that's the idea. I probably won't ever unlock this particular crew cabin because why? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess the lower electric charge requirement would be nice, but we've got nice amounts of room and uh, room for eight technically, but I probably wouldn't want to put any more than two in an area this size. I think I think that would be crap. Maybe two or three. Uh, so a life support situation, we've got 108 days for eight. So we're talking about for my intended crew of uh, two or three, um, more than half a year, uh, three quarters of a year kind of thing. So yeah, that's what this is for. And we've even got lights for the docking port. So that has been thought of. And otherwise it's shrouded like uh, many other stations tend to be. It's sort of a salient sort of thing right now. I mean, at least in basic shape and size. So that's not a replica by any means, but it's the basic idea. 
One module that we will want to put on eventually is a science lab, but I don't have that here. So this is a station science module early, but considering its purchase cost is 200000 I think I'll wait for a station science module advanced. Uh, I, I think uh, this is quite a cost for something that is early. So we'll wait on that. This will be our first attempt to launch something like this, and we will hope it goes all right. So this is what I'm going to build, and let's check if it's possible to have two build slots. Well, okay, the answer to that question is yes. Yes, you can have two build slots, but my second build slot is really, really bad right now. Really, really bad. Let's see, um, oh yes, uh, the rate on the second build slot is 0.125. Um, I don't feel a need to really focus on that right now. Still, R&D is more of a thing. Uh, it's nice to have one going, you know, off to the side. And in this case, we'll move the, the moon mission down. It's already 41.74% complete, and our schedule says that we need to do that in 244 days. So we've got time to build that and possibly a backup mission if necessary if we need to rework something about that. Let's get our spaceport done. So 74 days. Ooh, there's a Earth to Saturn thing possible there. Maybe next time after we launch this, we could try and launch the Jovian one and see if we can get to Saturn. Could be an interesting thing. Let me uh, quickly see, can we get a contract for that? Well, first space station is here. Hold on. Um, periapsis above 400,000, okay. At least two Kerbals. Oh, we have to uh, bring two Kerbals. 30 days, they have to be kept there for 30 days and then they have to come back. How long do we have to do this? Two years. You know what? That's exactly what we want to do. Let's take that. This wants us to adjust the orbit of the uncrewed Kelly 3, which is currently in orbit around the moon but can't do too much else. Oh, here's a Saturn flyby. Ten years. Alright. Yeah. We've got a lot of stuff to do now. Okay. I saw a Venus thing there. So uh, let's uh, see when the next Venus transfer window might be. 48 days. I don't think we're going to make that one. We've got a lot to do already, but we should have that in mind. Uh, that was an uncrewed lander on Venus, and that's... Since they don't model pressure... I don't well, I think they don't model pressure. That's not too hard. Anyway, let's bring Spaceport 1 to the launch pad. And I think I want our our station to be in line with the moon so we'll we'll orient it like that we'll make sure we launch at the right timing for that okay uh, we are not going to let anybody go up with it right now and let us launch for the Jovian 1 launch next time we won't be able to I don't think we'll be able to slingshot by Jupiter and then go to Saturn because the window is for direct transfer to Saturn I'm not too sure the slingshot would work. Uh, the Saturn would be in the wrong place for the slingshot if it's uh, in the right place for a direct transfer, I think. We'll have to check that out. Okay, we're uh, ways off from... I wonder why uh, it started out with a shortage of electric charge somewhere. Well, it's uh, refilling, so that's good. But yeah, that's a lot of electric charge. But why would it start short, I don't know. I sort of want it to fill up, but I don't think we want to wait any longer. Let's just get to the right relative inclination and then launch. Yeah, it's bizarre. I don't remember dumping any electric charge from somewhere. Okay, anyway, throttle up. SAS is on. Let's see. First station. Ignition. Okay, 
Electric charge is being guzzled quite quickly, too. But we have a lot. Nico 621 carrying a 25 ton station to orbit. There isn't much margin on this launch. If it fails, uh, if, if we have a serious failure, we can't really recover the station in this case. And by serious failure, I mean like uh, engine out on the second or third stage. Fortunately, I, we didn't have a full um, burn time on the third stage. We didn't need its seven minutes or so burn time. So we're not like pushing it. I gotta add in the floats and parachutes for the for the other Nico first stages. No reason why not to make them uh, recoverable. We should try that out sometime. Really, legitimately try out whether they can it can keep the engines safe. As in, not wet. Uh, we've lost an engine, but that's not... I'd rather lose an engine on this stage than on the latter stages. Okay, five seconds till the end of the first stage. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, two NK-15Vs have ignited. Oh, we've lost one engine. Oh, great. Uh, well... I... yep, yeah, I can't handle this. Well, this sort of thing can happen. Let's see. Um, I'll just try my best. Uh, my best is not very good right now. That engine went out in a hurry. I'm trying to spin stabilize here. <laughs> well, what else can I do? That's not bad, actually. Mathematically, there's still enough delta V, but this is that's not particularly convincing right now. Uh, we have loss of uh, performance on this engine. Well, that's not going to help. That's loss of ISP and loss of thrust. Okay, well, it's, it's actually gone even worse. It's now at a quarter of its normal ISP and thrust. I'm going to decouple the fairings. And, well, there goes that engine anyway. Sep, ignition. No, I don't really want you to go backwards right now. This thing doesn't have enough thrust to catch it. And there's not enough delta V now. Okie dokie. I mean, most stages, most of the delta V is close. I mean, a lot of the delta V is backloaded, right? Because the vehicle is lighter. We've got re-entry conditions. Um, maybe I should try and slow it down and, like, land. I don't know. I mean, if we could pick up some pieces, that wouldn't be the worst thing. Oh. Aerodynamic stress. There goes that idea. <sighs> yeah, well... Okay. But this sort of thing happened, so, you know, what can I do? 
this is why I designed the crude one to have to be a 606 instead of the Nico 621. I think now that that was highly justified. I think this station might be too heavy for Nico 606, but perhaps we should try that. It'll be more expensive to launch it, but that's an idea. Well, uh, the rest of this is intact. Only the engine decided to go away. We should put parachutes on our station. Nah, not a good idea. Okay, back to Space Center. Okay, so next time, a launch to Saturn, a crewed mission to the moon, a possible space station launch, any of these things may happen. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.